Hi, this video will provide a brief introduction on how to capture luminescence readings using the TCAN Infinity 200 Pro microplate readers and eye control software. The eye control software will deliver raw data directly to Excel without any data analysis. If you're looking for a way to capture luminescence data as well as get curve fitting functionality, then you'll want to look for videos on this channel or online or contact TCAN about using Magellan software for that purpose. The first step in setting up your measurement will be to make sure that you have selected a plate definition that matches the plate you intend to use. Generally for luminescence readings you're going to want to use a white plate but there are some situations where white plates are not advisable. If the signals are very bright the light from one well can radiate through into another well and register as signal when in fact it's just this kind of crosstalk that's happening. So if you start to see wells where you've not placed a sample and yet, yet, yet you're getting signal there, that's a sign that you've got this kind of uh, excessive amount of signal in your plate and that's when you might want to consider switching to black plates. For today's example I'm going to use this Griner flat white chimney plate. If as you look through the list of definitions um, in this pull down, if you don't find the plate that you want, then contact TCAN and they'll help you get the right definition. But it is very critical that you pick a definition here that matches the plate you intend to use because within the plate definitions are parameters such as the plate height, which is important to the reader for making sure that it measures the plate at the correct height distance so that all the light from a specific well is collected and, and you aren't collecting light from neighboring wells because the, the probe is too high and not close enough to the plate. If you're just going to measure all white light coming from the wells, then you'll grab this luminescent strip and drag it into the screen and release it here. This strip invokes the use of the in reader's photon counting photomultiplier detector. This is a scheme of what that looks like. So this would be the plate carrier here with your plate on top and then there's a motor which translates a little lens up and down and that lens is coupled to a fiber optic and that light is guided through a filter wheel onto the detector. This detector can see signals from essentially one count per second all the way up to one billion counts per second and the built-in filter wheel on the instrument has a couple different colored filters as well as a neutral density filter on it that I'll describe later. But the, the height of this probe over the plate is what's dictated by the plate definition that you select. So that's why it's critical that you have the right definition to make sure this probe's at the right height. The setup for luminescence on the Infinity 200 Pro readers is very simple and that's because the photon counting detector requires no gain adjustment whatsoever. All you need to do is select the integration time you need per well, decide whether or not you're going to need attenuation, and I'll describe that later. And in this instance, we will never use settle time for a, a luminescence measurement on this reader. So the default is 1,000 milliseconds per well. That'll work for most all applications, but there are instances where if you want to go faster, you can use a lower integration time. And that's where if your signals are greater than about, let's say, 200 to 300,000 counts per second, you can get away with an integration time between, let's say, 100 or you know, 500 milliseconds. If your counts are lower than that, then certainly some additional amount of integration time may be necessary. In extreme cases, let's say where the signals are below 5,000 counts, then uh, you may need to integrate for as much as a few seconds. But uh, generally, um, most applications and kits, you'll be seeing signals in excess of 10,000 to 100,000 counts. For my example, I'll go ahead and just put in a 100 millisecond time. The only other step you might add here is to have a move plate out step so that the plate kicks out when the measurement is done. You may also choose to come up here to File and Save As and give your file a name so that you can call it up at a later time and use it again. We can go ahead and just do a test read here. My 
simulation is just going to drive data off into Excel. So I have a matrix of output here. Now, of course, this is simulated, but in your assay, you'd be um, best to see signals anywhere from zero counts all the way out to very, very high counts. This one here has got counts out to at least a million, um, and that's perfectly acceptable for this instrument. But you definitely want to see, you know, maybe single to double digit counts for your background and uh, some increase in that signal for wells where you have sample. So what would happen if you were looking at this data and you were to see that there are some counts here that exceed 10 million per well? In that instance, we would want to invoke what's called attenuation. And by clicking here to say automatic, the reader will automatically look at each well, determine if its counts are above 10 million, and if so, it will rotate a what's called a 2OD filter into the light path in front of the detector and reduce the amount of light reaching the detector by 100 times. It will then measure the signal and multiply the result by 100 and report that back out in your data. When it does that, the software is going to highlight the wells where it has applied attenuation, so you'll be able to see which ones you know, got attenuation or not. But by virtue of this attenuation feature, it extends the reader's ability to measure very, very bright samples by another hundred times what it otherwise could. And the reason for this is that the detector's linear out to 10 million counts, but beyond that, too many photons are arriving at it to be linear, and therefore by putting this OD filter in front of the light path, you can bring the detector down into a range where it's happy, and it can detect that signal, and then we just apply this two, uh, excuse me, this hundredfold um, factor back onto the data. The uh, other option within the luminescence measurement scheme for the infinity readers is to use this other one here called dual color. So I'm going to right click on this strip here, delete that away, then bring in the dual color. And the purpose of dual color is to measure assays such as Promega's dual glow assay where you've got two different enzymes in the assay that produce different colors of luminescent light. So in that case, there's these options to pick filters that correspond to the colors of luminescence being produced. Also, again, this ability to set the amount of integration time per well. And the other option within this software is to also perform what are called BRET assays, or bioluminescence resonance energy transfer measurements that incorporate the use of luminescence and fluorescence to measure binding between elements in your sample. Um, and to do that, you would pull down here and grab the appropriate filters for that measurement. If you need more information about that, I'll put some links in the description to Promega assays as well as to some information about Brett assays. For those of you who would like to do luminescence readings and also have injectors incorporated into the method, look for another video on this channel or contact TCAN for help on that topic. As you can see from the left side of the screen here, there are ways to implement dispensing and injecting steps along with your assay and the reader to generate signals based on the injection of different reagents. Thank you for your attention, and uh, please be sure to contact TCAN if you need additional help. Thank you.